Supposedly, Abraham Lincoln has had more biographical words written about him than any other historical figure, except possibly for Napoleon Bonaparte. Um, his life was almost completely documented, except for the early years when he was growing up in poverty, which, of course, there's no documentation. But once he arrives in the public scene, his life is really uh, played out in public. And so early on, you see him in this picture from 1860 during the campaign. This is an item of campaign jewelry, like a pin, which he appears fresh-faced, open, from Illinois, um, identifying himself, really, to the American people. And as we move on, he again was constantly establishing himself in both in words and deeds as well as in images. So we go from that picture in 1860 to one in the same year, the so-called picture that made him president, the Matthew Brady print in February 1860, which was taken at the same time as he gave his very important Cooper Union address that established him as a serious contender as the president. Once Lincoln got into the White House, the first day that he arrived in Washington, he had his photograph taken in the Brady studio, and he had himself phot photographed throughout his tenure as president. In 1864, we see him again establishing himself as a strong, authoritative leader in this figure by Brady. You'll notice he has a beard now. He grew the beard, I think, in part to indicate that he was cutting himself off from peacetime, establishing himself as a wartime presence, as a strong, almost warrior figure. That image of solidity, of course, was at odds with domestic life in the White House, the tragedy of losing his son Willie, the thousands of deaths that were on the battlefield, the stresses and strains of dealing um, with domestic life. And this sentimental picture by Gal Alexander Gardner shows Abraham and his son Tad in this kind of instructional mode in which Tad, who is something of a scamp, leans on the table as if daring the president to make him turn to his lessons. So that's life behind the scenes in the White House, at least suggested through the Gardner picture. But we end, really, with a very important picture of Lincoln arriving in Richmond just after the Confederacy had left town, uh, abandoned the Capitol, and Lincoln comes in to see the scene, and he's mobbed in a really electrifying moment by the freed African Americans who surround him and shout their praises of the great emancipator. That moment of triumph is dashed almost a, a week later with the assassination of the president. Um, and we have this rather spooky foretelling of it in this plaster cast of his face by Clark Mills, the sculptor, which really does appear to be a death mask because it's white, the eyes are closed, the face is gnarled and in repose. But it, it, it actually was a, a taken from life, and it gives an adequate and indeed exemplary representation of what Lincoln went through as president, the, the, the furrow of his brow, the, the beard, the deep eye sockets, and the fatigue that was setting in by 1865. And the final image in the exhibition is the really truly great portrait by Alexander Gardner called the Crack Plate Lincoln, which was taken in 1865 in February, just before the end of the war. And in it, we see all of Lincoln's humanity expressed in a face which seems to have recorded every horror, every triumph, every moment of the Civil War. And it really is a map, I think, of the Civil War years etched in the face of the man who saw the Union through it.